my pre-k friends welcome to another day of distance learning we got some fun things planned for you today one of the things that i'm going to need you to get is a washcloth so you're going to need a washcloth later if you have one or some type of a towel or um, a blanket even you could use which is fine uh, you, you know, you're going to need that here in a little bit i'm going to need you to get your bag of play-doh your piece of paper to write your letter on and in your package you're going to need your clothes that you've been using this week to create your outfits and um, clothes pins and then if you have it two pins that have a cap like this that has this on it I'm not even sure what that's called little grip something or other but see if you can find two pins that have that cap on them and I'm going to tell you what we're going to be doing with those in a little bit so that's those are some of the things that you're going to need today and this morning Miss Beal uh, did the pre-k did the virtual assembly from the pre-k classroom so hopefully you you've got to watch that with her or if you haven't yet uh, watch that with her she's filming it fr from our classroom and the intentions that you sent me yesterday she should be saying them on there we'll do a prayer this morning for um, our class and let's pray for our school and then you guys can add any intentions that you want to on there and I think we should sing Jesus loves me that was our song for the week so can you begin with me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good. Did you like that trip back in time yesterday? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, we won't be going back in time today, but we will kind of be talking about things that we do a little differently if you don't have modern conveniences like a washer or a dryer. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, there's a great story for you for your reading today. It's called Mrs. McNosh Hangs Up Her Wash. And it is a really silly story about a lady who hangs up everything on her clothesline. Even the dog. So you need to watch it. And then I want you to tell me some of the silly items or tell your mom or dad some of the silly items that Mrs. McNosh hung up on her clothesline. And would you hang that up on your clothesline? What are some of the things that you would hang up on your clothesline? at your house and we're going to work on our letter for the day is letter d as in dog so we're going to work on that letter today and we will we'll go ahead and get started with that let me move this camera down here i'm going to bring this down so let's work on the letter D, and D makes the D, D, D. It's really windy, so hopefully this doesn't blow away. D sound. Dog. Dad. Diamond. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that I can think of begins with a D. So to make our uppercase D, we're going to start at the top of the line and make a straight line down. You're going to lift your pen and come back to the top, and then you're going to make a curved line around. And that is your uppercase D. Start at the top and make a straight line down. Lift your pencil, come back up to the top, and make a curved line down around to the bottom. Now, to make the lowercase D, what you need to do is start at the top. You need to start at the top and go down. All the way to the bottom, straight line. And then you're gonna come halfway up and come around. So you have your uppercase D and your lowercase D. 
So remember to do the lowercase d. You start at the top and make a straight line down. Lift it up. Come halfway up and make a curved line around. So you'll notice that both your uppercase and your lowercase d's have straight lines and they have curved lines. But you'll notice your curved lines go the opposite direction. This one curves around this way and this one curves around the opposite way. So I would say this one is curving around to the, I'm going to think that would be the right, and this one curves to the left. It's hard for me to think that because this is upside down. Your D is pointing to the left, your lowercase d is pointing to the left, your uppercase d is pointing to the right. All right. So that's how you're going to, and once you practice writing your D, and I haven't been telling you guys, but I need to remind you, don't forget to keep practicing your name. And that's something I'm going to need for you guys to do um, as much as you can. I'd like for you to at least practice your name every day. And even this summer, when we're no longer in school, it would still be very important for you to remember how to keep practicing your name and learning how to write it because... When you go to kindergarten, you're gonna, they're gonna, your kindergarten teacher is going to want you to be able to write your name. And I just saw my friend here, and I just realized I forgot to have us do the pledge. So I'm going to sit him up on the railing, but I'm going to hold on to him because see the flag blowing? It's very windy out here today. So I'm going to hold on to him while we do the pledge. So let's go ahead and stand up. We'll get our legs stretched out a little bit. We haven't done any wiggles for a while. So we'll, hopefully he'll stay up. So put your right hand over your heart and you look at the flag and say, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Kind of changed things up here. Didn't mean to, but that's okay. We, we just go with the flow in pre-K, don't we? Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about is I was looking at my seeds. Have you guys looked at your seeds lately? This was me practicing which way to do my D. Have you guys looked at your seeds lately? Look at mine. Look at those roots growing. It's growing all the way down here. And then this one's got all kinds of like, oops, hard to see, all kinds of little sprouts on it. So I think I will take my seeds and plant them in my garden and see what kind of beans I'm going to grow today or grow. Uh, the other thing I want you to work on, let's look and see what we have here. For your science and social studies, I'm going to have you, I want you to help mom and dad with the laundry. And what I want you to do is I want you to be able, um, to fold help fold laundry. So if you've done laundry today, help mom and dad fold the laundry. That's why I wanted you to get a washcloth because this is, we're going to talk a little bit about math with this washcloth, but I also wanted you to be able to help fold your laundry and why it's important that you fold your laundry. One of the reasons is, is because if you don't fold your laundry, then they get all wrinkled and it just kind of looks, eh. so you want to be able to kind of look nice. You want to have a nice shirt on that's not wrinkled and um, kind of helps your mom know that it's clean because I know with my children I go into their rooms and their stuff laying on the floor and I don't know if it's clean or if it's dirty but if it's folded and put away then I know it's clean so that's what you guys need to do you make sure your laundry is folded and neatly put away so that you know what is clean and what is dirty because even if you throw it on the floor if you try it on in the morning and you're like ah, I don't want to wear this and you take it off and you throw it on the floor the next day you may not remember hmm was that clean or dirty then you're gonna throw it in the dirty clothes because you don't know and that just makes more work for you because just think like yesterday what if you had to hand wash your laundry you would be sure that you knew whether it was clean or dirty so go ahead, if you didn't go ahead and get your washcloth yet, pause the video and go and get your washcloth and meet me right back here. I'm going to move the camera down a little bit so we can talk about what we're going to do with the washcloth.
right. So with this washcloth, I'm going to bend the camera down so you can see what I'm talking about. So this washcloth is really in the shape of a square. No, there's a bee buzzing around me. In the shape of a square. Now, to fold a washcloth, now your mom may have you do something different, but this is how I fold mine. And so I'm going to tell you right now, you fold the washcloth the way mom wants you to when you're helping her with the laundry. But for right now, if you can just work with me on how I'm going to fold this one. So this washcloth is unfolded. It's a whole. It's a whole thing. It's a whole square. But now we're going to fold it in half. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the top and fold it over so it's touching the bottom. So now you've taken it and you now you have half. This is half. This means it's half the size that it was. Whole and half. So now it's half the size. If you fold it again from the side to side to side, you're going to take it from half to one quarter. This is one quarter or one fourth. One fourth of the size. And then you can put it away and it takes up less room. So if you want to do that with me again, unfold it, make it whole. Now, I want you to show me how do you make it half? Make it half the size. Did you do this? Very good, you made it half the size. Now make it a one fourth of the size, or one, half, uh, one quarter, one fourth of the size. There you go. So that is how you fold a washcloth, and that's also how you measure things when you're doing portions, proportions, or fractions. There you go, whole, half, quarter. Very good. Now you can pause the video right now and you can, let's work on some um, some fun things to do with your dress up clothes. So go get your dress up clothes and your Play-Doh because you're going to need them and your pens. And I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to pull out my pens. I'm going to sit them here. My string came out with it, that's okay. I'm going to pull out my clothes pens. I'm going to lay them out here. I'm going to keep my clothes in the bag because it's so windy out where I am. I'm afraid they're going to blow away. So I'm just going to leave them in the bag for right now. We are going to build a clothesline. So now you don't have to use a pen like this. Some people, if you have craft sticks, you can do that. That is okay too. So what I want you to do is take your Play-Doh and I want you to get a nice big piece of it, about like this. And then I want you to smoosh it around, get it nice and soft, work those muscles in your hands. And then I want you to kind of, kind of make it like a, a big ball, but I need your ball to kind of have a flat side. So roll it into a ball. and do that with another piece. They don't have to be exactly the same size, but it might help if they are. And you're gonna sit them kinda of close to each other. Now this part you might need some help with with your, with your mom or dad or brother or sister. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your string that came with your kit and you are going to slide it under that little part of the cap that holds it on. The clip. There we go. That's the word I've been looking for. The clip part of the cap. Wrap it around and then I want you to tie it. You know, I don't think you need to tie it in a knot. That should just tie it one time. That should work. And do the same thing with the other end of your line. Slip it under the clip 
and tie it. So just to show you real quickly how you tie, let me lay this down real quick. It's kind of hard, but when if you have it clipped under here, this will stand up. This one will be next to it. So the one that's cut, you can bring it around and under, grab it, and pull. All right. Now what you can now what I want you to do is taking your play-doh and I might have to move the camera back a lot because the string is really really long. So let me move the camera back quite a bit. So what you do is you're going to put a ball of play-doh and you're going to stick your pen down in it. And that's going to help hold it steady. Then you are going to do the same thing with the other pen. Now what I'm going to do just because I don't have a lot of room is I'm going to make my clothesline a little bit shorter. And if you need to do that, that's fine too. And I'm going to just kind of wrap that around a few times. That might even be easier than tying it. Learn things as you go a lot. All right. So now you've got a clothesline and if you need to make it a little bit tighter, you just got to move it. And then that sinks down in there and then that stays up. Now this is where you're going to move this around a little bit. You're going to take your clothes that are in your bag and you're going to pick one and take it out. And you're going to hang it on your clothesline using your clips. So I got a t-shirt out, so I'm going to hang the t-shirt. You can hang it upside down or right side up. You're going to Use your pincher grasp. Remember, we talked about that. Use your thumb and your finger. You pinch them together and you put them on the clothesline. You're going to hang your clothes up. You can pick another one. You might have to move these down a little bit more. Try my boots, put my boot on. You may have to move around your clothesline a little bit because your, your clothespins might be a little bit too heavy. So I'm putting my pin now in an angle, hope in, in at an angle, hoping that it helps it stay up. So try that. See if you can hang your clothes up with the clothes pins. The important part is to try and get your clothes pins to pinch and hang on there. If they flip around, that's not a big deal. The big thing is we want you to work on this grasp. I'm going to move this out of the way. Bring this back closer. And that is really all that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the assembly from our classroom and that you work really hard on this grasp to help you hold the pencil. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.